Hi, Mel Todd here again. So the next story I'm loading is something called Monster Stoner. Again, it's another short story I wrote for the a Trailer Park anthology, Trailer Park 2. And this time when friends and relatives, I mean, do you count your sister as a relative when you're a teenage boy? Maybe. Start turning into stone statues on people's yards. They start getting a bit worried. So they finally decide to call in Uncle Leon. It's never going to go the way they expect. So I hope you enjoyed this story uh, with full permission from Three Ravens Press. Check it out. And if you like the story, go check out the other ones. Thanks. Monster Stoner by Mel Todd Sally Matthews stood at the kitchen window in her double wide and stared out at the statue in her yard. It needed to be mowed, but that statue would make it a bit difficult. Gerald, are the boys playing tricks again? They raiding home supply warehouses again? She raised a cup of coffee to her mouth as she inspected the statue. Glasses might help, but she would swear it looked an awful lot like Billy Jones, Casey's best friend. Not that I know of, Sally. Why? Gerald came up behind her, dropping a kiss on the back of her neck. She smiled and leaned back against him, her long T-shirt sliding up with his hand on her ass. Sally sighed and pulled away, nodding out the window. Don't that look an awful lot like Billy? She said, setting down her coffee. And where is Casey? Gerald stopped his morning attention and gazed out the window. Huh. You're right, Buttercup. Give me a moment. He let his hand fall away to her disappointment, and a minute later the front door shut. Sally sighed. Those boys were always up to something. She'd better expect a visit from Lardass later. Oh, well, nothing new there. Grits would help give her energy to get through that visit. Sally, you better get out here. She jerked up at that. Gerald never got upset about anything. The last time she heard him that worried, she was in labor in the bed of his truck with Casey. She shut everything off and hurried out, not caring if anyone could see her ass. At 40, it was a damn fine ass. Outside, she stood stock still next to Gerald as she stared at perfect statues of Casey and Billy, even down to the stupid tattoo they'd gotten after high school graduation. From her window, she'd only seen Billy. She looked at that a long time. Well, hell, I guess we're calling the police after all. She tried to sound calm, but her hands shook as she traced the face of her baby boy. What in the world was happening in Clayville? We have to do something, Fred, Jeff Sillink whispered furiously. My ma's still a statue. Your sister was a gorgeous work of art. He paused for a second to remember the exquisite statue of Mary in her bikini, and then shook his head. Even Officer Lardass was a statue. You know, there's a monster out here turning people into lawn ornaments. If we don't do something, half of Clayville's gonna be stone. Fred Cooper glared at Jeff. And what are we gonna do? I don't have a magic wand. The last I checked, you're barely gonna graduate. We ain't no superheroes. Jeff swallowed hard and looked around the almost empty Wendy's. We gotta go monster hunting. I got my 22 and you can get your dad's 1911. Fred jerked back. Oh, hell no. Do I look stupid? Besides, I've been hunting with you before. He shoved a fry into his frosty as he glared at Jeff. I still have a scar on my ass because you don't know how to set a safety. Besides, they don't stay statues forever. Billy turned back human after a week and didn't know nothing had happened. Then he got a whooping from both his ma and pa for scaring him. We can wait it out. Yeah, but it's been two weeks, and Mary still ain't fully human. She creaks when she stretches, and her skin is still that weird white color. Jeff wasn't giving up, no matter how much he enjoyed the new color scheme of Mary. White with dark brown hair made her look like a sexy vampire out of the movies. She's pissed about that. Says even the tanning beds don't help, and you don't want to be around her when she's pissed. Besides, keep your eyes off my sis. She's too young for you. 
Fred gave Jeff a narrow-eyed glare. I'd never trust you with her. I see how you talk about the other girls. You only want one thing. Jeff tried to look virtuous, but at 16, Mary had most of the boys in town drooling after her. She's 16, almost 17. Now I'm only 18. It ain't that big a difference, he protested. When she turns 21, maybe Daddy won't kill anyone that looks at her. But I can guarantee you, you ain't never getting her pants if I have any say in it. Fred stole a pickle from Jeff's plate. Oh, true. Your dad don't take kindly to the idea of anyone dating Mary. Jeff sighed and picked up his burger, minus a pickle, taking a bite. Can't be mad at me for hoping. Eh, don't bother. Fred waved that away. Besides, why would you want to date Mary outside her looks? She's snippy most of the time and has Dad wrapped around her pinky. The only thing she can talk about is that show Housewives. Pretty sure she has her sight set on marrying Rich, and you ain't that. Hey, you never know. I, I could invent something and be all famous like. Fred snorted. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to hear about you and my sister. The only thing you should be thinking about is keeping your nose clean until graduation, and then both of us going to basic. Jeff rolled his eyes. That's later. If we don't do something about this monster, there might not be a graduation. We got to do something. This ain't our problem. Let Chief John solve it. Fred couldn't even manage to say that with a straight face. He started to snort at the idea of Chief John's doing anything but leading the holiday parades and holding down the diner stool drinking his coffee. He wasn't a bad man, just not a good police chief. See, there ain't no one else. We gotta do something, Jeff said, a victorious smile on his face. Like what? I don't know nothing about hunting monsters. Hell, until now I wouldn't have said they were real. In fact, maybe it's some crazy scientist with a petrifying gun, Fred said, focused on the fries instead of looking at Jeff. They all knew it was a monster. It just felt like one. It was the creepiest feeling, and everyone who unpetrified wouldn't talk about what it had been like. Even Officer Lardass, his real name was Larry Atkins, just muttered about eyes and then seeing everyone staring at him two weeks later. And I don't want to be no statue. Jeff subsided and pulled at the bun of his hamburger. The normally packed Wendy's was quiet, and it felt odd. There should have been half their class in here, laughing and joking, but this monster had everyone spooked. They'd even started moving the statues of people to one area to monitor. Not everyone woke up easily, and the petrifications were getting longer and longer. Well, what if... Jeff trailed off his shoulders hunching. We could... He stopped again, and Fred didn't need to be a genius to recognize the emotions on his face. Told you, there isn't a damn thing we can do. Vindication didn't feel as good as he thought, and he shoved another fry into his frosty. Jeff straightened up, and his eyes lit up. I got it. I know what we gotta do. He looked like someone had electrified him. Fred leaned back, a bit wary. Inevitably, when Jeff got an idea that lit him up like that, either it was the dumbest thing in the history of dumb ideas, or it would make him homecoming king which had happened twice. What? We need to ask your Uncle Leon, Jeff said with the air of a man declaring Eureka. Fred's eyes widened. That's it. You have done gone loco. Ain't no way I'm gonna ask Uncle Leon to do anything. He even yelled at Ma last time she went over to bring him some casserole, saying he wasn't an invalid and didn't need no nurse. They fought. I ain't never heard her yell at him before, and she left crying. He broke her best corning where he did, and Ma never cries. Plus, <laughs> Bertha May is vicious. Fred, we don't have a choice. You know he was in the army, then worked for the government. He's the only person who has, and he won't talk about it. That means he was doing that black book stuff. He's a perfect person to ask. Jeff looked radiant at the idea. Yeah, and the last time those Jehovah's Witnesses went to bug him, they got asses full of rock salt. 
I got enough scars on my ass from my best friend. I don't need no more from my uncle. Fred hunched further down. Besides, he was pretty sure his uncle knew how to dispose of bodies. Who else we gon' get? You know the mayor don't do dang thing, and if we ask any outsiders in, well... Jeff trailed off. Fred sighed. Jeff wasn't wrong. Most of the people here grew and sold weed or worked at the local meat processing plant. Outsiders would come in slinging laws around and probably get so caught up in how small towns work that they'd be a statue too, if someone didn't bury them in their back fields. Fred, I don't want to have a half a graduating class B statues, and I sure as hell don't want to miss my chance to get out of this damned town because I turned to stone. Jeff had a pleading tone. The boy was worse than a puppy. <sighs> Fred sucked down the last of his frosty. Graduation was in a month, and they were both leaving for the military. Jeff had enlisted in the Air Force, Fred the Navy. It sounded nice, a life at sea. If they didn't show up for their first day, or if they didn't graduate, they'd end up like his brother, Bubba. Fred had no desire to end up like Bubba. First of all, meth teeth sucked and he'd prefer to not waste his life by being in and out of jail on drug charges. Fine, but you're driving, and if I get bit, I'm telling everyone it was you. Jeff rolled his eyes. So can we go get him? I'm finishing my fries first. Fred ate every fry like he was moving through molasses, but as the final one hit his mouth, he couldn't come up with any other options. Okay, he sighed. Let's go. Jeff grinned, that manic gleam that made Fred want to run the other direction. They slid into Fred's car, more accurately his mom's, but he could use it as long as he picked her up from work, and they headed off to Uncle Leon's. Leon Chancet was his mom's older brother. Darlene didn't talk about him much, but never said a bad word about him either. He was crotchety, walked everywhere, and didn't have patience or a kind word for no one. But then, Fred had never heard him say much about anyone either. Mostly, he stayed out in his cabin on the edge of town. People accused him of being a hoity-toity as he paid extra to have Gladys deliver his food each month. But why not? Some people found the grocery store a pain in the ass and boring. Personally, Fred thought it was a great idea. The small Honda Acura slowly crept up the dirt road with too many ruts and holes to make him feel good. If he damaged his ma's car, he'd be grounded till he left for the Navy. With a sigh of relief, he pulled up to the house. It was a small three-room shack. Fred thought his grandpa had grown up there. At least ma said she'd been there a lot, even before Leon came back to live there. It wasn't in bad shape, but it wouldn't win no design awards. I swear, if he shoots me, I'm leaving your ass here, Fred muttered as he got out of the car. You're kin. He wouldn't shoot you. Jeff protested, but he stood with the door between him and the house. Uh-huh, tell that to Cousin Jerry, Fred muttered. They both stood there looking at the house. It looked awfully normal to cause this much wariness. Fred, Jeff hissed, staring at him. I know, okay? Give me a minute. Fred swallowed and lifted his chin. Yo, Uncle Leon, need to talk to you. There was no sound from the cabin. Jeff glanced over at Fred. You think he's not home? He's always home. He's just being Uncle Leon, Fred muttered. He raised his voice. Uncle Leon, really? We got a problem. We don't know what to do and ain't no way Chief Johns can solve it. Fred listened carefully and thought maybe he heard a snort. Can we come talk to you? The door creaked open and Uncle Leon stepped out on the porch. He was about five foot six, stocky, muscled with a mustache and goatee. His baseball cap, the Detroit Lions, hid his skull, while mirrored sunglasses reflected their own image back at them. Seems to me you're already talking. What's Darlene's stupid husband done this time? His voice was low and strong, and even from ten yards away it made Fred straighten his spine up even if Uncle Leon was putting his dad down, Fred couldn't really argue. 
It ain't ma, sir. There's a monster turning people to stone, even Mary. The words rushed out of him and he cringed. Explain, Leon said, his voice even colder than it had been. Fred babbled it all out, with help from Jeff, about Mary turning to stone, about Ma, even Officer Lardass. That eventually they turned back, but the time was getting longer and longer, and it was getting worse. They came out with an advisory yesterday to make sure you weren't out by yourself, though two of our classmates got stoned when they were at the park. We gotta do something. Jeff and I'll graduate, but not if we miss our finals. The last bit came out in a rush. Huh. Thought something was up. Gladys was acting all funny last delivery day, and Bertha May's been snappish. Come on in. He stepped back inside, and Fred sagged in relief. They hadn't been shot at. See? Told you he'd fix it, Jeff whispered fiercely. I ain't fixed it yet, boys. Now get your asses in here. The voice came from within, and Jeff jumped as if goosed, casting a wide-eye look at Fred. Neither of them said anything more as they trotted up the two steps to his porch and stepped into Leon's house. That voice meant don't dawdle. Shut the door. I ain't cool in the town, Leon said. It took a minute to see him in the gloom of the house. And don't bug Bertha May. Leon's head tilted to the left and both boys followed it like a guideline to the German shepherd laying on her dog bed and staring at them as if they were tasty treats. Fred sucked in his stomach and felt his balls crawl up a bit closer to his ass. Bertha May was a hundred pounds of mean shepherd, and the only person she liked was Leon. She'd even been known to snarl at the preacher. Though Fred had to admit when she'd snarled at Miss Maisie, Miss Maisie had snarled back. Since then, Bertha May seemed to respect the 85-year-old. He wasn't no Miss Maisie. No, sir, we won't bug Bertha May. Fred could feel Jeff's head nodding behind him, mainly because he shook the whole floor. You two know how to use a computer and a map app? Leon asked, his sunglasses still on as he stared at the two boys. Yes, sir, they said in unison. There's my computer. Get on it and put a location pin in every person you know of that's been stoned, as you say. The two boys got to work putting in pins and arguing about where other people were found. Sir, what exactly did you do in the military? Jeff ventured as they were waiting for the map to print. Leon had a damn nice setup, with more tech than Jeff had in his whole house. Well now, if I had to tell you that, you wouldn't be joining the Air Force, because the people that watch me would have decided you know too much. And we all are aware young men can't keep their mouth shut to save their lives. And if somebody with titties bounced them in front of you, you'd babble like a baby. Leon turned his head, and Fred could feel the cold stare. Uh, sir, yes, sir. Jeff whipped his eyes back to their work. The growl from Bertha May didn't help at all. Keep that attitude, and maybe you'll survive basic, boy. You got that printed out yet? Yes, sir. Fred got up and put the map in Leon's outstretched hand. Hmm. Okay. Let me look at this and I'll get back to you. You got a phone? Fred rolled his eyes. Jeff just kept looking straight ahead. Bertha May looked a bit too hungry. Number? I have no desire to read your mind, Leon drawled, and Fred swallowed. Can you do that? Jeff stammered, inching closer to the door. Leon just smiled as Fred babbled out his number. Good. Now get. I'll call you when I got something. Fred tore out of there with Jeff on his heels, neither of them taking a breath until they were in the car with the doors locked. Told you, Uncle Leon is scary. Bertha May came back from her mock stalking of the two idiots the door banging shut as they sprinted out of the house. Bertha May plopped herself down in her bed facing Leon, chuffing out a clear doggy laugh. Leon didn't start laughing until he heard the small car pulling out and racing down the hill. Once his laughter faded, he sat there for a minute, thoughtful. It sure sounded like a monster, and his nephew was right. Chief Johns would just get people killed. 
I'm too old for this shit. Shit for brains, call Abby. Calling Abby, his electronic system said. Abraham Levitt. Yo, Abby, I got a problem, Leon said. An old buddy, they never called each other their real names. It was more fun this way and made it harder to figure out who they were talking about. Hey, Lucy, what's up? The phone was answered by a deep masculine voice. I thought you were crawling off to the mountains to die. Yeah, I did. Just haven't kicked it yet. You got time to do some research triangulating for me? Leon leaned back in his chair, petting Bertha May, who had put her head on his lap. Depends. You ever going to invite me over so I can upgrade your cheap-ass shit? Leon snorted. <laughs> My shit is only cheap if you didn't buy what you said you would. You know I don't do that computer crap. I just need it to work. That was three years ago. Your stuff is so ancient I'm surprised you can call me, Abby said with a gruff laugh. You need the upgrades. Fine. Do this research for me, and if I'm alive after it, you can come play with yourself over here. Mmm. You know, I do love a good masturbation session. Only because you love your electronics more than any woman, Leon snapped back, a grin on his face. Not true. I'd take Bertha May away from you in a split second, Abby argued, his barely held back laughter in his voice. I'm remoting in. Good thing Bertha May is a one-man bitch, he rubbed her ears as he talked. Shit for brains. Allow Abby access. Granted, the computer said back. I'm in. What the hell is this, you geocaching now? Didn't think you'd be up for that after Nevada. Shush, you. Now they got some monster here, turning people to stone, and you know this town. Besides, if I actually called the proper authorities, they'd invade like the Huns sweeping over Europe. Not interested. Stone or statues? Statues from what I've gathered, but they don't last forever. But each petrification is getting longer. My niece ain't fully back to her overly sex teenage self yet. Huh. You know what that means, right? I'm medically retired, not terminally dumb. Basilisk or Gorgon, either are a pain. Leon grunted, annoyance clear in his tone. Yeah, yeah, and I'm a mother hen. I'll get this back to you in a day or so. Lucy, don't be stupid, Abby said, a hint of worry in his voice. I'm not the one that ducked into an open tomb to take a leak and pissed on a scarab mound. <laughs> Leon snickered as he spoke. I'm never going to live that down, am I? Nope. Talk to you when you find me my monster. How are you going to remove it? The click of keys as Abby talked made it clear he was already working. Old-fashioned way, I guess. Be nice if I knew for sure what it was. But last time I checked, enough bullets in the chest or head kills damn near everything. Leon had a few nice pieces, but the Desert Eagle was the pride of his collection, and really the only thing he felt comfortable using anymore. True. I'll let you know. Take care of him, Bertha May. Abby hung up and Leon leaned back, thinking about the abandoned mines, hidden glens, and other places a monster could be. But coming into town as often as it was meant it was looking for something. But what? Two days later, Abby still hadn't gotten back to him, and he heard the crunch of tires coming up his road. Groceries weren't due until tomorrow. When had his place become so damn popular? The slamming door and shuffling footsteps gave him a clue. Uncle Leon, it's Fred. Ma sent me up here with news. Leon huffed and stepped out onto the porch. Darlene was a pain in the ass, but she'd done right by him back when they were younger, and even now she sent food on up with Gladys and made sure he got a few jars of moonshine when any of their family fired up the still. Even if the woman had reverted to treating him like he was five and needed a nursemaid, Abby talked too damn much. The things you do for family, he muttered 
turning to face the boy, Bertha May by his side. And what's that? He knew his sunglasses, the super-reflective mirrored ones, made people uncomfortable. It was half the reason he wore them. Well, Miss Maisie got statued out in her garden last night. Chief Johns is about to call a city emergency and ask the feds for help. Ma says if you don't take care of this now before a bunch of government idiots swarm to town, she's cutting off your moonshine until she ain't pissed no more. Leon sighed and crossed his arms. Darlene getting over one of her pissy moods had been known to take years. While he didn't drink a lot, he didn't have enough stock to outweigh her. Most saints didn't have that level of patience. And how did she know you came to talk to me? His voice was low and dangerous. I thought you had better sense than to go blabbing to your ma about something like this. Fred loudly scuffed his shoe in the dirt and cleared his throat. Uh, she saw the mud on her car, demanded to know what we were doing up here, and, you know, you're the only one that lives up here that I might know. Sorry, sir, she broke me. She threatened to withhold both her mac and cheese and her berry cobbler. Leon sighed. Uh, I can't argue with that, boy. I would have caved, too. Darlene always did make the best cobbler in the area. He nodded at the vehicle next to Fred. So that ain't Darlene's car. You steal it? No, sir, Fred sounded offended, and Leon fought to hide his snicker. Pa said if we were crazy enough to come up her and ask you to help with this bother, the truck would be easier than Ma's car. He mentioned you don't drive. Here comes a point you just have to give up some things in life. Running, smoking, driving. I just gave up a bunch at once. I'm not happy to hear about Miss Maisie. Be ready to go tomorrow morning. I want you and your nitwit friend to be here at the break of dawn. Yes, sir. Um, sir, Fred said, his voice hesitant. Quit sounding like a schoolgirl in Sunday school. Spit it out, Leon snapped. That boy had better grow a backbone or the military would chew him up and spit him out. Do you know where we're going yet and what should we bring? Leon tilted his head back in a God-give-me-strength move. Bring your rifles, sunglasses, and your ears. Ears? Fred sounded confused. Yes, your ears. If you two nitwits don't listen to me, you'll miss your graduation. Make sure your friend knows that. Now get. Leon didn't wait for Fred to leave. He just turned and walked back into the house. Shit for brains, call Abby. Calling Abby. The phone was answered on the second ring. Yes, yes, I know, Lucy, but I've got the info for you. I was starting to think you'd lost your touch, Leon spoke as he went to the fridge to grab a pre-made burrito, then put it in the microwave, hitting the one-minute button twice. It isn't like you gave me a lot to work from. I'm pretty sure it's a Gorgon and obviously looking for something. The statues are appearing in a pattern rippling out from a rough central area. There are three places it could be. An abandoned warehouse, an old school, like 1800s old, or a played-out mine. Be damn careful with that mine. You know how timbers can rot. Leon made a face, tapping his finger on the microwave. You think just one? Yeah, but again, I'm not there, and the times you gave me aren't exact. Be careful. I'm always careful, Leon said, his voice full of reproach. But I'm working with two teens. Will you look up the recruiters for Fred Cooper and Jeff Silank? I suspect they're going to be my bait. The petrification wears off, but depending on how hard they get hit, they might miss their boot date. Can you track down and make sure if they can't make it, they get into the next class? Will they graduate if they go stony? Abby asked. I know the principal. If I point out they were doing what the town police couldn't, he'll graduate them just to rub it into John's face. At the beep of the microwave, Leon pulled the burrito out, letting it cool for a moment. Abby snorted. Okay, 
I'll find that info and get them a top-secret stamp on their file, but you'll have to tell them not to talk about it if you do solve this problem. Not an issue. Darlene is their weakness, and I'll tell them to put it under Clayville secrets. The boys know what that means. Friends and relatives get awful upset when a moonshine still is taken out because someone blabbed. Last time that happened, it was Karen Gillespie. She finally moved out because there weren't no one that would give her so much as a time of day. You don't let stuff leak to outsiders, period. Mm, I hear that. Will do. Try not to get dead on me. There aren't too many of us from the program left. Leon fell silent, then shook his head. I'm too ornery to die. You know that. Now, shoot it to me and print it. The stupid machine never finds my printer. That's only because you have one that is expensive as all get out. You know you can have it read stuff to you. Thanks, but no, I'll read it myself. Stubborn old coot, Abby said, but his voice was amused. It's printing now. Leon's printer warmed up and a minute later clattered out the paper. He picked it up, running his fingers over the still warm paper. Okay, I'll hand it to the boys and we'll take care of this. Call me when done. Don't get killed. Ain't planning on it. Abby snorted and hung up. Leon settled back into his chair to plan. This would be a bit tricky, but he could figure it out. You ready for a hunt, Bertha May? The shepherd jerked her head up and barked twice before grabbing a leash and taking it to him. Not today, but tomorrow we're going monster hunting. Leon grinned as excitement, the first in a while, pumped through him. This should be fun. The next day, Jeff and Fred showed up at sunrise like he had asked them to. Okay, boys, you bring your hunting rifles like I asked. Yes, sir, they chimed. What'd you bring? I brought Dad's Kimber 30 6 Jeff said. And I brought my graduation present. I got it early to go hunt with you, Fred said, excitement bubbling over in his voice. Dad got me a 223 Rem Axis 2 XP. Leon nodded. Those'll work. I'm staying with my Desert Eagle. If it gets through you, this'll put down almost anything. Almost? Jeff asked, worry clear in his voice. Well, if we run into a dragon, we're dead, kid. But I've yet to hear of a dragon that turns people to stone. Usually they either leave you as a pile of ashes or eat you. Leon reached down and fumbled for a moment, grabbing Bertha May's leash. Let's go. Are dragons real? Jeff asked. Never seen one, but... Then didn't think people could turn to statues either. Leon shook the leash as Bertha May tugged him to the truck, eagerness in every lunge. At least one of us is excited to hunt monsters, Fred muttered. Where are we going, Uncle Leon? Here. Leon handed them to paper. I want to try the played-out mine first, then the warehouse and save the school for last. Okay, now I know where the warehouse is. Jeff said, the paper crackling as he read the address out loud. Leon climbed into the back seat of the truck, and Bertha May jumped up beside him. Don't you want to ride in the front? Fred asked. Nope, rather be back here. Besides, Bertha May gets snappish in cars. Neither of the young men said another thing about it, just got in and started driving. The rough roads announced they were getting to a mine long before anything else did. Where do you want to go first? Jeff asked as they got out of the car and stood looking at the mine. Hmm, Leon said, turning his head one way or the other. Tell me what it looks like to you. Like a mine? Fred offered. Leon unerringly whapped him upside the head. Think, if you were hunting, would you say this looks like a forest? Oh, yeah. Fred's hair rustled as he rubbed his skull. No car marks out of fresh. Even the ruts have grass grown in them. The mine opening is boarded up, but can't tell if it's loose from here. Though lots of gaps, the bottom big enough for animals. Maybe not a bear, but coyotes and smaller easily. Leon nodded. 
Much better. Get your rifles ready, but you both better keep those safeties on till I tell you otherwise. I get shot by either of you two. The military ain't getting nothing but some broken bones. I heard how Fred got those scars on his ass. The murmured yes-sirs were just loud enough to hear. The two boys went up ahead, and Leon followed Bertha May, on a short leashing, pulling him through the years of wear on the abandoned road. Yeah, I don't see anything inside, or at least nothing the beam of a flashlight can reach, Jeff said, his voice still hushed. Leon frowned, turning his head around. The odds are this creature has a tail. Fan out and see if you can see anything that looks like a tail, a big one cutting through the nearby grass or dirt. The boys headed out and Leon inhaled deeply, scenting the air. But all he could smell was old coal dust, the broken grass from the boys, and Bertha May. He rubbed the top of her head. You need a bath, girl. A low growl was his only response, and he laughed. <laughs> Not today, but probably next week. No more rolling in the cow pies. She pulled away from him so he couldn't pet her without moving. Leon snickered and thought about the area. It really was too far from town, and he was darn sure it would be more obvious. But then it had been a long time since he'd been on a hunt, and the last time he was younger, stupider, and not quite so beat up. Military service left you broken in more ways than one. We don't see nothing, Uncle Leon, Fred said, panting a bit. No, sir, nothing like that. Saw some deer scat, but that's it. Jeff sounded out of breath, too. You two better add running to your afternoons, or Basic is gonna kill you, Leon said mildly. There were sheepish mutters, but neither boy disagreed. Okay, back to the truck. Next up is the warehouse. Come on, Bertha May. The dog huffed in obvious annoyance, but turned and pulled him to the truck, not quite as eagerly as before. Leon climbed up into the back seat, then settled. Bertha May was still huffy as she sat against the door, not him. There wasn't much talking as Fred drove the truck out of the hills. The beep of the GPS told them when to turn, and Leon leaned back, eyes closed, trying to plan. No matter how he parsed it, the boys were bait. He heaved a sigh. Abby had better come through for him about the boys, Otherwise, he'd be pulling in more favors. Everything all right, sir? Jeff asked from the front seat. Yep, just wondering about my sanity as I get older. Nothing to worry about. Your sanity? Fred asked, and Leon could almost feel him peering at him. Well, I can't be in my right mind if I'm going out monster hunting with two virgins, now can I? Hey, who told you that? Jeff's outraged comment had Fred groaning. Boy, I can done tell you ain't never killed no one. Don't go getting your tidy whities in a bunch. Hopefully that'll never change. But until it does, you're a virgin. May you die one. Leon didn't raise his voice and managed to keep his amusement in check. Oh, came the whispered response. Less than a minute later, Jeff asked, how old were you when you lost your virginity? September 12, 1993, in another country, following orders. And I still remember the look on the man's face as my bullet impacted him. Don't ever think killing is easy. Some virginities suck to lose. Leon didn't say anything else until they pulled up to the warehouse. They got out, and he could smell trash rotting, rust, exhaust, and felt the wind blowing at his cap. Let's go, boys. Tell me what you see, anything that looks out of place as we approach. Not sure this structure was even here the last time I was in this part of town. It would all look odd to me. Pretty sure there used to be fields of wildflowers here. Bertha May was by his side again on a short leash, as they moved toward the warehouse. Tracking is easier in the woods, but... Fred trailed off, the clump of his feet pausing. Huh. Looks like a newest chain is hanging off a door. 
but the door's closed. Move quiet, boys. Bertha May, hunt. The shepherd instantly went on alert and circled Leon first one direction, then the opposite, making sure the leash didn't tangle around him. As a group, they moved closer to the door. It opened with a creak that had Leon cussing under his breath. Only something deaf and dead would have missed that noise. So much for quiet. Eyes open, boys. They stepped into the warehouse. The gloom settled around them like a physical weight. Leon took a deep breath, pulling in the air through his nose and then his mouth. There, a musky smell that was familiar from the time he had to spend an hour with snakes crawling over him while he was on a hunt. It had sucked. But, oddly, he still rather liked snakes. They were interesting creatures, cold yet smart, resilient even. This is the one. You smell the snake musk? He kept turning his head, trying to track the scent. But even their voices echoed oddly in this warehouse. How big was it? Did the gloom hide the walls? What else was hiding in here? The what? How do snakes have a musk? Fred sounded bewildered, and Leon sighed. Never mind. Just look for snake tracks. Large ones. And don't look anything in here in the face. Leon already expected to have statues on his hands, but maybe he'd be surprised. Okay, sure, Fred muttered as they moved through the warehouse. Silent they weren't, but they'd already warned anything in here that they were coming, so it didn't matter much. Hey, I found something. Looks like a nest, Jeff called off from his right. Leon spun. Jeff, keep your eyes on the ground. Don't look up. He tried to track by sound, but the damn echoes threw him off. What are you talking about, eyes on the ground? Holy shit, that's a big snake! Jeff sounded morbidly fascinated. Jeff, aim and fire! Leon called out. The sound of Fred running echoed through the building. Human. A rich, sensuous voice wiggled through the air. Just the word promising so much. I've been looking for ones like you. Don't you want to tell me where they are? Who's that? Fred's voice now came from the same area as Jeff's, and Leon cursed, moving toward the voices. Find him, Bertha, he ordered. The dog sprang away, the leash acting like a pulley as he moved in a fast shuffle across the warehouse, trying not to trip and break his neck. Look at me, pretty boy. Tell me where my children are. I will not hurt you. Just tell me. Power infused the last of her words. Who are you? Jeff's words cut off with a stiffening gurgle, and Lee uncussed as he impacted into a pillar. Around, Bertha, not through. A whine was his only response as they got closer. Jeff, where are you, Jeff? Fred yelled out, sounding too far away from Leon. Fred, close your eyes, damn it, Leon yelled. Bertha stopped, and he stumbled into a cold stone. He didn't have to do more than put his hand on it to realize it had been Jeff. Wow, you're pri- Fred broke off, and Leon sighed. The young never listened. These kids better unfreeze at some point or Darlene was going to skin him alive. Look at me, human. Tell me where my children are. The voice promised sex, passion, death, and Leon almost wished he could lean into that promise. Life hadn't been easy for a long time. He turned and lifted his head, pulling off his sunglasses, his eyes closed as he listened to her voice and movements. I don't know where they are, but you can't keep killing people. I have not killed them yet, she growled, coming closer. But soon I will quit being so nice. Where are my children? Anger seeped into her voice. 
I don't know, but you gotta stop. We can't let you run around like this, Leon said as he put his hand on his desert eagle. I want my children back. I will kill every person in this country until I get them back. Anger and something deeper, darker, coated her words. Leon had heard that before in the rage of mothers crying over their dead children. Work with me, please. Leon didn't like to beg, but he'd try it once. Stupid humans, taking, destroying, not caring. I will destroy everyone. Her voice had raised to a shriek laced with madness, and he could feel her hiss about ten feet in front of him. I'm sorry, Leon said, and opened his eyes. He faced her, and a sad smile crossed his face as he lifted the gun, hammer cocked. What? Why are you not stone? Why are you not dead? Fine. I will kill you the hard way. The gorgon hissed and leaned closer. He could see the shadows of her snakes rising further from her skull as she moved. Because I'm effectively blind, he said, voice full of regret and frustration, and pulled the trigger. The fifty caliber Desert Eagle fired, and he saw her head all but disappear, even as the sound pounded on his eardrums. His baby packed a punch and didn't mind making noise. Damn waste, Leon muttered. He turned. The warehouse was a mix of dark and light shadows, and that was it. It let him not walk into walls, unless your guide dog was pulling it too fast. But no colors, no detail, blind according to the military and every doctor he'd ever seen. Just what the hell? Why did she think we had her children? He spoke to the empty warehouse. A fragment of a comment one of the boys had made flickered through his mind. Vandalism. Stupid fucking teenagers. Leon leaned back against a column. Two vaguely humanoid shapes he figured were Jeff and Fred. He pulled up his phone. Little shit, call Abby. Calling Abby, the phone said. Technology definitely made some aspects of life easier. He'd still rather see. Lucy, you find it? Abraham's voice came on, overly loud in the quiet warehouse. Found, killed. It was a Gorgon. I guess some kids were in here vandalizing and stole some of her babies. No clue about that, but odds are they're dead. Shit. Would have been nice to keep her as a friendly. I know. I tried, but she couldn't stone me. Dying from snake bites isn't the way I want to go. Much rather fall to sleep permanently while beating all those idiots on jeopardy. Don't we all? The boys? Stone. Need to get them back, explain to Darlene and Jeff's ma. They should be fine in a week or so. No idea how pissed she was when she hit them, but she did mention she wasn't creating permanent statues, but I got no clue how long they'll stay stoned. I need to call Jackie, the principal. You got a line on the recruiters? Just thinking about the ends to tie up made him exhausted. Maybe. Did they suck? Abby asked. What do you mean, maybe? Well, they didn't run away screaming like virgin first lieutenants, if that's what you're asking. But their ability to ignore a pair of breasts was lacking, Leon replied dryly. Not sure you can throw any stones. I remember your first week of leave. How much did she take you for? The laughter in Abby's voice was barely hidden. Bite me. I still have pics of your tattoo before you got it removed, so don't tempt me, Leon said. But there was no anger in his voice, just exhaustion. You get clean up out here and they'll need to look for babies and interview some high schoolers. 
And what about the recruiters? Abby was hiding something. He knew it. Got it. And if they didn't act like idiots, I might fast-track them someplace else. Leon sighed. Not my problem. You talk to them. They cross the adult threshold in my book, even if they need to listen better. But never met a young man who learned that before 20. How long until you get someone to come get me and move the statues? I got a truck, but not like I can drive it. Yep, got people on the way. Good job, Leon. Leon groaned. I swear, Abby, you start doing that touchy-feely emotional management crap, I'm telling Bertha May there's a special on asshole oysters next time you're near me. Abraham chuckled. Hmm, <laughs> noted. I'll be in touch. Leon hung up. Idiot. Acting like I'm one of these MBA suits. He shoved the phone in his pocket, huffing out of breath. Swear no one these days knows how to deal with crap. So damn tired to death being the only answer. He felt around him, but there was no dog. Bertha May, get your fuzzy butt back here. A short bark, and he groaned and waited. That was her, I'm busy, wait a minute, bark. The damn dog was worse than a wife. He'd counted to 185 before he heard her nails clicking on the floor. About time. He reached down his hand, but instead of fur and a leash, he found her mouth holding something. What's that? Bertha May placed the oval object in his hand. It was large enough he was surprised she'd managed to pick it up in her mouth. Hands explored it, and he sighed. It's an egg. Snakes lay eggs. It's one of hers, isn't it? He could feel Bertha staring at him with a no-duh look. I don't need another mouth to feed. You eat enough for three. She nudged him with her nose, and he sighed. Fine. Hated killing her mom. Can Gorgons have boys? Bertha May didn't answer, but this time she put the leash in his hand. He'd refused the stupid service animal crap or the fancy handle. He was blindish. It wasn't no one's business but his, and Bertha helped him just fine with what he needed. Abby had set up the rest. Bertha led him out as he cradled the egg in one hand, thinking hard. He stepped out into the light and gave in to the pressure of his conscience and the dog glaring at him. Fine, I'll keep it. But you're in charge of wrangling the darn thing, and you get to explain it to Abby. Bertha just huffed and sat next to him. Leon put the egg in his cap and waited for help to arrive. Darlene? was not going to be happy.